Hello everyone. Imagine you have a product like this book that you want to put in front of your potential customers. How do you do that? First, you need to understand uh, what they need and what they're looking for. You need to analyze the demand for the products that are similar to whatever it is that you want to sell. In this video, I will show you how you can analyze your customer's demand using a combination of knowledge graphs and AI so that in the end you have something like this graph that shows you what are the main search terms that people use when they search for your product, uh, what are the combinations of these search terms so that you can better understand how they're used in context, and how you can also use the AI with a combination of knowledge graphs to understand the main topics that people think about when they think about your product. So that in the end, you can generate a much better description of your product. You can also get it to the top of a search engine or Amazon rankings, and that you can actually reach the customers who might be interested in your product, even if it was not the cohort that you were thinking about in the first place when you created it. So keep watching if you want to learn how it works. In this demonstration, I will be using a tool that's called Infernodus, which visualizes any text as a knowledge graph and then uses the built-in AI to generate ideas for you. But I will also show how you can use this tool in combination with uh, Amazon Analytics tools like Helium 10 or Jungle Scout, where you just get spreadsheets of keywords like this and how you can import them into Infernodus. So instead of dealing with these boring lists, you can actually get a graph that shows you patterns of search very quickly and that enables you to see uh, what are the recurrent patterns in demand that your customers have. So first of all, you need to import some data. You will go to the apps section of Infernodus and add some ideas here. So as my book um, is about conversations, by the way, this book is something we wrote together with my friend and it's published in a small publishing house in Berlin and we want to sell it on Amazon. So it's a real use case where we need to think how to promote it better. It's called The Conversation Book and it consists of 40 questions that propose hypothetical scenarios in life. We think it's a really fun book, but we want to know how to market it better to whoever could be interested in this, right? So I'll start with the, with the title of the book here, Conversation Book, to see what people search for when they search for something like that. And the way that it works is I'll be using the Keyword Research app Infranodus gets uh, suggested search queries from Google and other sources and then visualizes them as a graph. You know how when you search on Google, it tells you what else people search for. So it's exactly this data, but 200 different ideas. And the main terms conversation book are removed from the graph because otherwise they would take too much space. So uh, Infranodus is hiding them for you to show the context around this query. And it gives you a really clear idea very quickly of what people search for when they look for something like this. So here I see that they're looking for English practice. The notes that are bigger are more influential and if they have the same color, it means they're used in the same context and they will also be closer to each other on the graph. So as we humans are very good in detecting patterns, this visual representation is very useful because it lets you show quickly the most important stuff. Unlike spreadsheet tables like this used by other tools where you just have to look through and find uh, some consistent results. I mean, it's pretty difficult, you know, you have to kind of read through them manually. Here you see directly visually what are the most uh, interesting potential keywords to add to your original one. So here I see that, for example, people are searching a lot for English practice when they search for conversation books. If I click on those two terms, I can go here and see what are the uh, search terms and search phrases used uh, with these search terms, right? So I, hear, I, I see here English speaking practice, English practice conversation book. So I'm going to add this into my keywords ideas here in project notes, and I'm going to say uh, that these are keyword ideas, and I will say that I want English speaking practice book. So that's something I haven't thought of before, that you can use this book uh, for having an English language practice or English speaking practice. So I can select English speaking practice, English speaking practice book. So that's a potentially interesting way to market it. English speaking practice um, also for beginners. I see here another node. So I'm going to save this 
move on and see what other things exist out here. So one way to do that in Infranodus is once you get to the parts uh, that you understand, you can actually remove the layer of most influential nodes with one click by clicking this button here. And it removes this first layer to show what, what's hiding beneath. So we know that speaking we already have, so let's remove that as well. Friend comes up as an important node. So I will click on friend and see what else is used here. Conversation with friends. How to start conversation with friends. Okay, so this is great because uh, this is something that I should emphasize in the description to this product is that uh, it's good for having conversation with friends. So that's something I'm going to add. And also start a conversation with friends and also conversations to make friends because this is something I see in these recurrent patterns, right? So also here I, I have one on topics. And by the way, if I want to see how it connects to my original search, I can get this word back into the graph. So I will click here on conversation. It's going to back into the graph. And if I click on conversation topic, I see uh, what people search for when they search for the topic and conversation, topic of conversation book. So that's also something that people search for which can be interesting if I want to reach my potential customers. Now, once I do this research and I kind of zoomed in, I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to get all the words that I hid back into the graph to see which patterns are formed. So we have one cluster on conversation books here, the yellow one, and then another one on language learning. I can also ask the AI to interpret the names of these clusters for me. So here we have one uh, on literary dialogue. It actually takes these clusters and sends it to GPT-4, which powers ChatGPT to give you these names. And then one on language mastery and one on digital resources. So, okay, let's actually remove the conversation book and see how the topics change so they become a bit more specific. And here I have a more specific representation that those books are on language learning social connections and child education. So for example, let's explore the first cluster of language learning. Let's dive a little bit deeper into this particular topic of books on conversation language learning. So if I click here, I'm going to see that, okay, English practice books on conversations. So I'm going to select these four nodes and then I can add more related search queries for this particular one. So I just have them here. I can also type them in manually, add to graph, and then Infranodus will import more data related to these ideas. I can also just say English conversation, for instance, right? And add uh, more stuff on English here. And as you can see, I have now 414 different search queries. And if I click show all, it's going to show me all of them. And now I'm going to remove book because we already know that book is a big word here. PDF I'm not interested in. And here I see that speaking practice comes up quite a lot. So we already have that. So I'm going to hide it from the graph. Freeze, something that people need, but I'm not interested in that because we have a book to sell. And I'm going to go to topic. Beginner. So this is quite a big uh, node now. You see topic and beginner. And if I click here, I see in which context it's used. Speaking topics for beginners with answers. Speaking topics for beginners. Okay, so that's something to add. We have English speaking, but we don't have speaking topics for beginners. And this book can be very interesting actually to learn a language and especially to propose topics to discuss with your teacher, for instance. So that's also something we should address when we market it. We also see student here. So maybe a student dialogue. Let's click here and see what comes up there. English conversation dialogues for students. This is great actually because uh, it makes me think not only of a description that we have for this book, but also of where we could market it, that it would be a great book to have in language schools, for instance. So I'm going to add this in save it and we have this new keyword idea saved now here right so once i go into this cluster i can get all the words back uh, let's hide the conversation book again so just to give a quick note like we're using the graph as a thinking device here okay this is why it's really good to have this interactive representation of uh, those keyword uh, co-occurrences because 
we look at the graph, we hide the stuff that we already know to see if anything that we don't know comes up, right? So for instance, here, I'm removing the stuff that I was already thinking about to get to the parts uh, that I haven't thought of yet. So for example, here, I have friend and making friends. So why not make a search on conversation for friends, for instance? So I can click on friend, go to add more queries. Uh, it already proposes me some search query that's very specific, but let's say I'll just want conversations with friends just this general one and see what comes up, but kind of exploring this topic of having conversation with friends. And now, as you can see, the cluster with friends became bigger because we imported more data. We can hide again all the stuff that we don't need that we already know, conversation, English book. And let's go into the friend cluster. And as you can see, everything is connected to friends. So let's hide friend and see what else comes up there in this green one here, right? So for example, I see that a lot of it is about uh, finding stuff on Reddit. So let's see what is there. So it's kind of like people just searching for things on Reddit. I'm not interested in that, so I'm going to delete that. Uh, PDF free speaking practice. I don't need any more because we already have these ideas recorded. So now I have topics coming up. And if I get back to friends, so I get the word friends back into the graph and then I can better see what else it's connected to. So for example, here I see topic texts, good conversation topic for texting. Okay, this is interesting. Could add this also, good conversation topics for texting and just in general, good conversation topics is another search query that, that people use. So as you can see, I'm gradually accumulating some interesting ideas. And if I get the word friend back, I see topic friend, what else it's connected to. I see all these different ideas. By the way, this is the point where you can also use the eye to summarize all these search queries. So here I have 31. If I don't want to read them, I can just click this button, summarize visible statements, and it's going to tell me what all those search queries are about. And here it says that uh, uh, it relates to various topics uh, that is connected to conversation books, English conversation practice, and topics for conversation with friends. Okay, so it's kind of like how you can talk to friends, but also maybe learn a language with friends. So this is something that we could explore. Now, another thing that we can do, and also something that we always recommend, is once you go into this uh, rabbit hole of exploring a particular topic, you can also now zoom out and look at a bigger picture. So for example, now we've been focusing a lot, I'm just gonna reload this graph. We've been focusing a lot on uh, on the name of this book, which is the conversation book, right? So let's say I want to uh, look at the bigger picture and say like, okay, this is about conversation. So why don't I look for something that relates to conversations in general? And this is the approach that we recommend in our ecological thinking framework, where we say that the best way to explore a subject is to alternate between zooming in and zooming out and focusing and exploring. So you kind of have this uh, matrix of modes where you can explore in a way where you zoom in, where you can also explore, but kind of zoom out and look at the bigger picture and where you can also focus on the structure or focus on a very particular idea. So this is what we're doing now. We're doing the zoom out exploration part. And we perform now a new search on conversation to see if there are any interesting patterns come up if we look for the search queries that people use when they search for just conversations, right? So we're building a map of uh, the informational demand. We're looking at the recurrent patterns of search that come up with the term conversation. So here I'm gonna remove conversation to see the context around it. We don't need English book and friends, perhaps also because we already have this. Uh, English speaking practice we don't need, so I can select these and also hide them from the graph topics. We already have the topics. It's quite an important one. Okay, this is interesting because look, we have two things. We have online. So people search for online apps, English speaking practice app. So that gives me an idea that we could actually also make an app uh, with the conversations. I will actually write it to my business idea an app 
for having conversations. Okay, gonna save this. And then another thing is that I see a lot of people are searching for guy starter tech. So what is this? Started with the guy. So it's actually girls looking for how to start a conversation with the guy. That's interesting. So maybe it's like a conversation starters for dating. So all this gives me very interesting ideas for the potential audience I could market it to, right? Like I see that uh, at the beginning there was this thing about learning a language with this book. Then there was this whole cluster on using it uh, with friends uh, for entertainment and for discovering new things about each other. You can also use it for romantic relations and maybe in couples or uh, if you're dating somebody. And then also I have this business idea which where it's proposing me to think uh, that maybe it could be like an app that I could develop based on this approach, right? So there I have uh, these ideas. Now, after I zoomed in, I zoom out again and I look at the bigger picture again. So here, as I said, this book is a book of questions. So it's not only conversations, it's also questions inside. I'm going to add more stuff on question. And maybe I will say first question book. Let's see if there are any interesting results in question books. Okay, so let's hide the most uh, visible terms from the graph and see if something interesting comes up. I do a few iterations here. And once I get to the more specific stuff, I will see that, for instance, okay, let's see talk, deep talks deep topics to talk about with friends. So this is interesting. Maybe if we get the conversation uh, node back, we can see if there is anything about deep conversations. And it's true, there are quite a few stuff about deep conversations or having deep conversations with friends. So let's add this also in. Having deep conversations with friends. And as you can see, of course, this can become really subjective because uh, you're looking at the graph and you're discovering things that are relevant to you. But as I'm the author of this book, I think it's also very important for me to sort of show, uh, to, to find the kind of like words it's connected to that also relate to my interests when I was creating this project. Of course, if I was just uh, only doing pure marketing, I would just look at the most important terms because I would want to address the very top of the demand. But the advantage in going into these more specific ones that are interesting for you is that you actually get to the parts which are not so popular and you address long tail keywords like that also, but that also relate to your interests. So this is why this graph is very important because it doesn't only let you see things that are most important by highlighting them bigger on the graph and showing that they connect to a lot of relevant topics, but you might also sometimes look at the graph and find uh, some very interesting cluster that you feel like is very important for your project, for the book, uh, was one of the reasons why you created it. And for example, this idea of having deep conversations was one of the important things that we really tried to put in. So it only confirms the fact that uh, it's very in interesting to use. And here I see also deep late night conversations. And uh, this is great because it gives me some kind of confirmation that uh, that people might be interested in this particular aspect as well. And now I can make a more general search and look for what people search for when they search for just questions and see what else comes up and add more ideas. As you can see, we already have 1,214 uh, search queries and a visualization of all the different ideas that connect to them, right? So this is a pretty uh, complete graph, so to say. Okay, so now I also want to show you, like we imported a lot of stuff, but how do we get to the particular uh, specific uh, aspect of it? And here we can choose to filter this graph by the last import. So here I will just show only the words that are related to questions. So what people search for when they search for questions. Here I have the graph. It shows me that the word question is connected to all these different ones. If I hide it from the graph, I can see that there's a lot of stuff on English. We had this already. Friends and having deep conversations with friends. This is also something we already wrote down. So I'm gonna 
remove these two because these are the biggest nodes and see what else comes up. Romantically, deep interview, general knowledge. Okay, boyfriend, so there's something about relationships that we also probably should add. So also having deep conversations in relationships. And then continue adding more and more ideas as we go along to find if there's something interesting that comes up. If, for example, I would like to filter the results by the conversation, so there was another search query, I just click here, and then it only filters the stuff by the conversation. If I want to see both uh, with the questions and conversations, I hold shift, and then I click on the other one, and I can see them both at the same time, actually. So as you can see, you can also do it like that. But now I'll just look at the conversation and see what else uh, we have that is connected to conversation. So these are, as you remember, th these are the patterns of search that people tend to do when they search for conversations, right? And this enables us to see what is the picture of demand around this topic. So for example, here again, we have conversation topics, dialogues for students. We already have this written down. Let's see if there is anything else. Let's remove PDF topic. See if anything else comes up. Funny, conversation starter, deep. Okay. Uh, there's something about apps, which is quite interesting. So it's sort of a lonely cluster, but also a big one on online. So let's see online. What is connected to online? Conversation chat online. So for example, this can be also an interesting product idea or app, conversation apps. So that could be also something for us to explore. It could be a new product idea, actually. Conversation app. I will add it here. We already had it, but this is just a confirmation that it can be an interesting subject. In fact, let's try to sort of look into this in a little bit more detail and say if there is conversation uh, app and see what exists on this topic out there and we filter by the last import to see what comes up. So again, English comes a lot, so it's mainly used for language practice, but also the word question comes up a lot. So why is that? Daily conversation in English for speaking questions. Okay, so this is kind of like an app where, where people are looking for the questions that they can use to have a conversation, which is a great confirmation that this app could be a very interesting use case for those who learn a language. So for example, this book could be converted into an app that would allow people to uh, interact with each other, right? So you kind of go through this process and once you're finished, you can click show all, visualize the whole graph, get all the words that are hidden back into the graph. And then what you can do is to use the built-in AI to interpret uh, these clusters once again, to see if there is anything interesting that comes up. So for example, here we have a cluster on entertainment talk. So this is kind of like using the idea of conversations for entertaining one another. Then we have literally fun. So this is kind of like how you can also play with the book. And by the way, an interesting aspect here is that we have game that is coming up. So for example, in this zooming out process, I can see that there is a whole cluster on games, conversation games. So let's actually click this and add some more ideas inside. This is the advantage of looking at the bigger picture because uh, you see some things that you haven't noticed before, right? So when I click on the conversation game now, and let's say I want to hide everything else because I want to discover what was related to just the conversation game, I see that it's something that people look for a lot, actually, when they search for card games. And if I click here, I can also see the number of searches that were performed. And here it shows 100 to 1000. Conversation card game. That's a pretty good number of searches because it's not the most popular one, which means you will have lower competition. Uh, but it's also not too little, which means you will have some audience for that. So I will also write this into my project ideas. Conversation game and conversation card game. Which is something how this book could be actually further developed, right? So as you go through these iterations, you will also see that uh, it's connected a lot to the idea of playing with friends, having deep conversations, using those card games. So this is why the patterns are so important because I see that 
when people are searching for conversation card games, they're also searching for deep conversations, right? So then it gives me a very clear idea that, okay, this is something really interesting to do. Deep conversation card game is a good uh, topic to target. Deep conversation card game. Gonna add this into my business ideas because that's not yet part of the product. This is how I would develop it further. And then basically you would just do the same iterations over and over again until uh, you feel like you have enough to work with. And once you do that, you will visualize the whole graph. And you can also do one more thing, which is really, really interesting for generating product ideas or seeing how you can address this map of customer demand in a very interesting way. Because what you're seeing right now is basically what people search for when they search for conversation, books, question books, and anything related to it. So it's like a map of their interest. And these are the clusters of words that they tend to use. So we have something about social connections, literally insights, um, language mastery, and elegant education. So something about education. Okay. One thing that Infernos can do, which is very interesting, is that it can show you what's missing in this graph. So how you could connect those clusters in an interesting way to generate new ideas. Here you will go to analytics panel and missing content and then you click on highlight and network and then it shows you the topics that could be better connected but are not. And usually uh, it's great to try to connect things that are kind of like at the different parts of the graph. So for instance here we have uh, one on literally insights and language mastery. So we can think of the connection between uh, how to learn a language but also how to generate some interesting ideas and maybe combining both in our product because we see that people are interested both in language mastery and in having some, some sorts of insights. So why don't we market the product in a way that combines those two ideas together? And here, as you can see, I'm generating an idea just looking at the graph, but I can also click AI insight question and then this gap will be sent to the built-in AI to generate an interesting idea that can be used to develop this product further. So for example, here, uh, it's talking about an app that could help individuals f fluently communicate, but also incorporate some inspirational ideas and deep questions to also give them a very good experience uh, of learning the language, right? So I'm going to save this because it's a really great product idea for me. And just to explain how that works. So first, to save, you need to click here. Uh, but to say how, how it works is basically this approach that... Uh, you have these clusters of nodes which are used in the same context in when the customers are searching for this product, right? So it's like groups of people that like to hang out together. So for example, in our case, we have uh, this one on the conversations uh, game. They usually use a lot in the same context, while English and speaking is used in another context a lot. So this is why they have the same color and are also closer to each other on the graph. And the potential arises when you try to connect two groups together. It's a theory that's also used in social sciences where you say like, okay, this is one group of words, this is another group of words. So it could be also like two groups of people. What happens if you link them together? So there's the theory that's, that's called the, the theory of structural holes that says that if you put a broker between two groups that are not so well connected or that are distant from one another, you will have a higher potential for innovation through this new connection. And this is exactly what we do here with words and ideas. We're seeing which words like to sort of hang out together. And uh, then we think, okay, how could this group be connected in a new and interesting way to ge generate something that we haven't thought of before? And one way to do this more effectively is to actually remove the most influential uh, participants from this discourse, right? So as we were searching for conversation books, this is something that's going to come up in all the search results. So I'm going to hide those. I'm also going to hide question because we did a lot of search on that and PDFs because uh, we're not interested in this. So I'm going to hide this and then I'm going to recalculate those gaps using these ideas, right? So here I have a slightly different constellation of topics now, which are more specific because one of them is about dating app even. So that's interesting because how you could make an app for dating or uh, that you could use during dating with this idea. Then you have board games, English speaking, and even TV show, right? So then if you highlight, uh, for instance, some gaps and reiterate through them, you will see that there are some really interesting connections. For instance, let's go 
from the beginning here. So one on board game and trivia fun. So can we make a board game that could also be a really fun quiz to play where people ask questions to each other. So that could be one way to connect those two topics together. Another one could be, let's say, on inspirational quotes and song lyrics. So that would be a completely different product. But as you can see, this is a very useful tool if you want to sort of go beyond the periphery of your thinking and to explore completely new ideas that would connect it to another, another discourse. That would be the case. But for now, we will stop here. I will make another video where I demonstrate how to use this feature to develop new products. One last thing that I want to show you that I promised at the beginning is uh, that if you don't want to use Infernodus to import this data, you can also use the data you have in Helium 10 uh, or in Jungle Scout, where, which, which basically generates keywords for the products. And here, if you export it as a CSV file, you can also import these keyword data uh, as a file. So you go into File Upload, then you choose the file, CSV in this case, then you choose the column that you want to analyze. You just want the keyword phrases. Click Next. This is, uh, I think, um, all the keywords for questions that are found on Amazon, right? And here I see that when people search for questions, they also search for conversation card. Uh, so that kind of confirms our idea that card games are quite important and also conversation games. So this is something that is uh, that that people are interested in and that we should probably address. And if, let's say, we make another import on another search term, like here I had questions, I will also search for conversation, add, get the list of keywords here. This is a Chrome extension of Helium 10 that I'm using here, which injects search results, but you can also use any other tool export the CSV file, and then go into my original CSV and say that I want to import a new CSV. So I'm just going to add this to my existing data. Click Visualize, select the column with just the keywords that I want to analyze, no filters used. Visualize, and then it's going to add uh, these results. And again, I'm going to hide the node that's called the book, the conversation also, because uh, these are the search terms used. And then I see once again a confirmation that uh, there are a lot of interests and also products that are related to making friends through conversations, having smart talks and interesting conversations, and also card games. So these are three clusters that I can use to discover it. Uh, much sparser graph, so less specifics than we had in the original analysis. But it's good to use this as a confirmation of your hypothesis. So for example, here I can see that uh, that according to their data, uh, this social aspect of the book and the card game is something that comes up quite a lot. So I'm probably going to focus on that. And it do doesn't have anything about English language, for example, which is great because if I have this insight through another tool, it means I have information that no other people will have when they do this research on Helium 10. So this is my competitive advantage here to look into how I could use it for language learning. I will record another video where I show how you can compare this picture of informational demand to the picture of informational supply so that you can compare what people search for in relation to what they find. And this is also a very useful tool to understand how to address uh, a highly relevant and potentially lucrative niche. So if you would like to get informed with the, when this video is out, please subscribe to this channel below. And if you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave them uh, also under the video, or you can also contact us using our support portal or Discord. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy using this tool. You can try it on infranodus.com. Thank you.